the nervous system is really good. If it has a challenge, it finds a way around it. It'll make a new pattern. That's why we all have these little idiosyncratic patterns, right? We walk some, some people you'll see them do this little, you know, you can, I can see people walking down the street and you can, I can tell, you know, right away, that, you know, they're walking inefficiently, they have hip pain and low back pain because I can see it. You know, you can just, maybe they, and why is that? Because maybe they injured their ankle when they were 16 years old, had a bad sprain. What do you do when you got a bad sprain in your ankle? How do you walk? Right? Okay? Your tissues heal, but your nervous system learns patterns. Okay? That's, I'm going to say that again. Your tissues heal, but your nervous system learns. It's not about the hardware. It's about the software. It's about the program. So you have to treat the program of movement, not the tissue. The tissue damage is the end result of bad programs. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so a, a injured ankle, yes, boom, there's the injury, oh, I sprained my ankle, now I've got a bad program. Now, not only is my ankle going to kind of go into a protection mode, but now my, I, you know, the, there's, no one, there's no one part of the body, everything happens in chains. So, so as soon as I have an ankle sprain, my glute goes inhibited, I, it, will, it won't work. So that's the reason I, there's even a word for it, it's called the G-med lurch, the gluteus medius. If you see this happening, that means that person's glute is not working at all. And they lean, instead of putting their weight on it to support their body weight, they choose to do this instead of using the muscle. Now what do they do? Okay. It's like counterbalancing. You step, you're, now, now what are you doing here? Your back joints are slamming together. Your back joints are slamming together. You know, and that may be a, a small movement that's just, it may look like this. You know, it doesn't have to be this. This is the original one, but even that small movement repetitively over time, over time, over time, eventually ruins your facet joints in your back. And when you and when you bend this way, the disc can be herniated or bulged this way. Like the disc is that little thing in the middle of the cushion, okay? and if you put a bunch of pressure down, okay, here's your uh, vertebrae, and there's a vertebrae below. <laughs> Artists at work. <laughs> there's your disc. So if you're constantly going, uh, and these sides are coming together, Let's look at what's going to happen to the disc material. Inside the disc material, inside the disc is this little toothpaste consistency stuff called the nucleus. That's what you, you know, when you have a disc bulge, that's what actually bulges. The outside is a very strong fibrous tissue. The inside is the, the consistency of toothpaste. Every time you do this, repetitively, over and over, over and over and over and over, the outside develops little cracks. And actually, uh, Professor McGill, he's done a lot of work with uh, um, discs and understanding how to, how to preserve your discs. I think he was the first presenter um, in Chicago. And he actually saw that basically, you know, these are concentric rings all the way around. And what happens is, basically, after time and time again, the pressure on these discs, they start to delaminate. And the little nucleus in the middle, it goes out like a worm. And it just finds its way until... You have enough cracks and enough cracks and enough cracks, and then, boom, a little worm head pokes its head out. And that's the beginning of a disc bulge. It's a little, it's a little, you know, it's, it's not like, most, that's, and that's the way most disc problems happen over time. It's like finding cracks in concrete, yeah, it's, water. It's, yeah, you know, it, it worms its way through until, and then it gets out, and as soon as it pokes its head out, the, what's the immune, the, the immune system says, your body says, whoa, that's not supposed to be here. So it goes, inflammation. Kill it, go get it, and it sends out the inf inflammatory process, and now you've got an inflamed low back, and, it, and the swelling happens. And when the swelling happens, what else comes out of here? Nerves, arteries, veins. You start losing blood flow. You start losing, it pinches, literally compresses and pinches down on your nerves and can cause numbness, tingling, pain, weakness, sciatica, all that kind of stuff. But it's merely from your body's 
inflammation process. Most of the time, the first thing is the inflammation process and the swelling that causes the problem, not the actual bone on the nerve and stuff like that. So it's an inflammatory process. But anyway, that's just an example of how one small ankle sprain 20 years ago can be the reason for your disc herniation when you're 42 years old. See that? So when we look at this, and we see this, we see this problem. Is this the cause or the effect? Is the is is this problem? Uh, do we need to? If we don't, if we don't, if we fix this, we go in and go in, maybe go in and do a microsurgery, or, or we go in and we maybe as a chiropractor we adjust it, or we do exercises and stuff to try and get the disc to go back into where it belongs. Is this going to come back? Yeah. Why? Still because you never fixed the program. You never fixed the pattern that made it develop. And that's what this is all about, is grooving correct programs again and identifying the programs that are off. And then re, you know, kind of erasing them, and then we'll replace them with a more efficient, stress-free pattern. Pretty simple concept, right? But we, if we only focus on the area of the overload and the downstream effects, we never get to the real cause of the problem and we just keep having recurring problems and recurring problems and recurring problems. And every time you have a problem, it doesn't get better each time, it usually gets worse each time. More time on earth, more stresses pile up, whatever it is for you. you know, I shouldn't say time, time has nothing to do with it. Chronologically, there's has nothing to do with it. It's the amount of biological stress you put on your body during that time. Okay? There's no reason to age decrepitly. Because if you put everything where it's supposed to be, think good thoughts, eat good food, and get good movement, there's no reason why you can't go as long as you want to go and do everything you want to do for as long as you want. Until one day, the light flickers out, and you had a great time the whole, the whole way. Right? But it's not the last 20 years where, you're, where you get old and grumpy. You might know anybody that's grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few. Just a few. Okay?